hearing Israel, Israel, but they don't know what actually transpired that led to Israel becoming an independent state. Hazel formed the Zionist organization and promoted Jewish immigration to Palestine in an effort to form a Jewish state in an effort to form a Jewish, a Jewish state. Today, that is Jewish state called Israel, state of Israel. Due to his Zionist work, he is known in the Hebrew Kozek, a visionary of the state. He is specifically mentioned even in the Declaration of Israel, Israel Independence. This man, was mentioned and is officially referred to as the spiritual father of the Jewish state. It is very important that our people, both especially the gullible ones, understand that your gullibility cannot stop the liberation of Biafra this year. Hazel was born in Pest, Kingdom of Hungary to a prosperous newly Jewish family. After a brief legal career in Vienna, he became the Paris correspondent of the Viennese newspaper. He confronted the anti-Semitic event in Vienna. I hope you understand what anti-Semitism means. He reached the conclusion that anti-Jewish sentiment would make Jewish assimilation impossible. This man single-handedly rose up, stood up because of the anti-Jewish activities across the world. He stood up one man and in 1896 Hazel published the pamphlet, The Judean Start, in which he elaborated his vision for a Jewish homeland. Because of the attack, the anti-Jewish anti-Semitism, he had a vision. His ideas attracted international attention and rapidly established Hazel as a major, major figure in the Jewish world. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Are you seeing some similarity in what we are doing today? The kidnap of Mazin Amdikano and the rise of Simon Ekpa and the Biafra government in exile. In 1897, Hazel convened what we call the first Zionist Congress in Basel. First ever. My fellow Biafrans, do you see some similarity? In 2023, we had the first ever Biafra Convention in Finland. First ever in the history of our freedom fighting. This man convinced the first ever Zionist Congress in Basel. Switzerland, in Switzerland, and was elected the president of the Zionist organization. He began a series of diplomatic initiatives. I am talking about 18 something, when Usman Danfodio was conquering the northern Nigeria. When Usman Danfodio was killing the Alsas, this man was busy having a vision for a Jewish state of Israel. And then he began the diplomatic initiative to build support for Jewish state. I am telling you that we are not land anywhere. But that was a vision. That was a vision and a pursuit division. Some people who don't know anything how the world works will be telling you today who is the government, which is government is supporting you, which state is supporting you, which how can somebody support you 
when you are showing that you are an idiot? How can somebody support you when you are dependent on people and you have no thinking of your own? How can people support you when you have shown to be a slave to ordinary nomadic people who don't know what is civilization? But today, we have changed the narrative. Now they understand we are not slave to nomadic. Now they understand there must be a need to support the liberation and the freedom of Biafra. Now they understand that people of integrity have risen up to show that Biafra has people of integrity and standard. He began a series of diplomatic initiatives to build support for Jewish state, appealing unsuccessfully to German emperor. He appealed to German emperor, who was not successful. And Ottoman Sultan he appealed to all these people, was, it was unsuccessful. At the sixth Zionist Congress in 1903, they have had the first one, the first, the second one, the third one, and the sixth one in 1903. Hazel presented the Uganda scheme. He even went as far as trying to build the state of Jewish state in Uganda of today. Are you aware of that? Are you aware that Israel had a vision to establish a state in Uganda? Present day Uganda. That is people, I don't know how many of you, and of course, the global ones who are looking at what we're doing today are stupid and whatever. I don't know how many of them are aware of this, that Israel wanted to establish a state in Uganda, present Uganda. Championed by Hazel. This was endorsed by Colonial Secretary Joseph Chamberlain on behalf of the British government. The proposal, which sought to create a temporary refugee for the Jews, ultimately rejected. Hazel died. This man died at the age of 44 in 1904 and was buried in Vienna. Now, let us also go fast forward after the Hazel attempt to establish the state of the Jewish state in Uganda, which was supposed to be the temporal refugee uh, place, because of the anti Semitism, anti Jewish that was on rampage all over the world, just like they are trying to annihilate the Afrans because of the light we carry. Are you surprised that what we are facing today in Nigeria is exactly what the Jewish people faced? all over the world. Then, Israel Declaration of Independence. I want you people to understand that the Declaration of Independence State of Israel was signed by 38 individuals. 38, 38 signed the document of the Declaration of State of Independence of, of Israel. Are you aware of that? Are you aware that it was only 38 people that signed to declare Israel as an independent state? You don't know. Now you are knowing it today. I'm explaining to you. Formally, declaration of the establishment of State of Israel was proclaimed on the 14th May, 1948 by a man called David Ben-Gurion, the executive head of the World Zionist Organization. The Zionist organization that this Hazel founded, chairman of the Jewish Agency for Palestine, and later the first prime minister of Israel. It declared the establishment of a Jewish state to be known as the State of Israel, which would come into effect on termination of the British mandate. Our own British mandate terminated in 2014. 
That was when the British mandate terminated. When they say you have 100 years after that, we decide. Nobody is talking about the agreement and how Nigeria become a country from amalgamation to the independence to fake independence to today present Nigeria. They put it under the carpet because nobody have risen up to challenge them. Nobody have risen up to question the existence of Nigeria until now. We are questioning it under the Biafra government in exile. I will question it with gun. We will question it with bomb. We will question it with, civil, with civility. We will question it diplomatically and we will question it politically. And that is the multi-dimensional approach. That thing they are avoiding to discuss, that particular existence of Nigeria on continuation of Nigeria, they have been avoiding to discuss, will be forced to discuss. They will be forced with the activities and the actions of the Biafra government in 2024. That's where we are going. That's why all these shenanigans, all this their uh, regional government, all this nonsense you see happening are happening today. And they have not actually started hitting the point because the point remain the continual existence of Nigeria as a country. They are not discussing it. What was the agreement of 1914? What was the agreement thereafter? Independent. What happened for after the 100 years of Nigeria? Nobody is discussing it. And we have seen Nigeria has become the worst and the evil state. A terrorist state it has become, and such state should not be allowed to stay even the next minute. That's why Biafra has decided to fight their way out, not this kind, not the type of war we fought in the 67. That was a very big lesson that we have learned. And today we are fighting differently. I am telling you, if this liberation of Biafra is going to take us the next 20 years after the 2nd of December, we are ready for it. But let us continue so that you understand how freedom is fought. Because many of you who have been in this struggle for the past 20 years actually was following people who do not know what they are doing. And it, either they were being sabotaged, especially from Azin Amdikano, who set up the indigenous people of Biafra, surrounded himself with criminals who were not actually fighting for freedom. Now, the event of the termination of the British mandate, Israel immediately wanted to declare their independence. Immediately that termination of the British mandate, on the same night, the event is celebrated annually, the Declaration of Israel. Now, let me also inform you that the possibility of a Jewish homeland in Palestine had been a goal of the Zionist organization, the Zionists founded by Hazel since the late 19th century. In 1917, British Foreign Ministry Arthur Belfort stated in a letter to the British Jewish community leader, Walter Lord, that His Majesty government views with favor the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people. And we use the best endeavor to facilitate the achievement of this object. It's being clearly understood that nothing shall be done which may prejudice the civil and religious right of existing non-Jewish community in Palestine. All the right and political status enjoyed by Jews in other countries. A woman again, Daluline no Mumife, Kunusi when I saw I need one Eastern is twenty four. No bossing Katina, where morning tea. Una Nugunu, ya beefe, Bogodioka, ya beefe, Maze, a Simon Epa, Bobia from Prime Minister, or Biafran Public Government in Esai. A decosi do not focus here, Ada, near Rapo, a Geniki will equal. Basta makaya bifenda ni no hugasi ni dwa kwa di chiche e drop ola ya on the comment section below. Oso de kwa ki bi ya bobo na nkabu bo si zgini esu ilayi ni dwa kwa. O ina fo ya bi yonyo nyo ayi kabalo ke ilayi ki ya ya. Antono.
ono notification share kwe 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 ndozo muna ye di nebe di iti ichaka dalu di nene boma nege ente oge na adela anya onye ndu ya pata na yuno mboro keme siyano mune mu all right wonderful people welcome back to this wonderful channel where we'll bring you back to back update and information as to the hot in case you have not joined our social media handle what are you waiting for kindly go ahead and subscribe like comment share and also remember to on your notification button so that whenever our news drops you will be the first we will collect them all right let's go down to the news proper Lomekas visit Namdekano resolve lawyers restriction. <laughs> that is the thread now. That's what is currently going on. Lomekas visited Namdekano uh, and they have resolved uh, lawyers restriction. Of course, you know that uh, Mazin Namdekano's lawyers were restricted from seeing him. And um, there is something that was trending last week. Uh, some people are asking questions whether Nandekano or Nozikwa is he still in this earth or has he, how has he crossed uh, into the world beyond? And people were wondering that his face have not been seen this, that, that, that. <laughs> A lot of fear. And I, I think um, this is the part of what made a uh, uh, lawmaker to visit him is either to show uh, that he is still in the land of the living because uh, we are not even it's not even uh, a thing of rejoicing again uh, if they say lawmaker visited in and they can make so that we'll come and be rejoicing we know that is either election is coming closer and these people know that Kano is a gateway it happened in Anambra yes there was a big tension in Anambra during uh, Chukumachao Soludo's election, the election that brought Chukumachao Soludo in Anambra into office, Mazin and Kano contributed 90% of what brought Soludo into office, even though he was in the DSS detention. Yes, he contributed 90% of what made Soludo to become the governor of Anambra State. Soludo was visiting him, making a lot of promises, you know, talking about Nandekano and how people, uh, the government have left him, the government have not been able, he, he spoke uh, as if that if he gets into that office, that with immediate effect, Kano is out of the DSS detention. That was what people talk. And um, they played their politics, did their politics, used Kano as, as the picture maker. They used him as the, the front page, the man on the front page, because that's what they used. They used Kano as the man on the front page to be able to achieve the agenda. And that is what these politicians have been doing. That's what the politicians have been doing. Uh, even late, uh, when late uh, Iwanyan was alive, who was the former uh, 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 president of Ahanes and Dibo, there were a lot of politics. That's why I will tell Ndibo, can Ndibo Jilunwayo? Hmm? We could not take it easy. Help your brother. You don't need to sabo your brother, betray your brother because of, of just politics. Because of politics. And because of this kind of politics that Ndibo are playing, Ndibo are not together. Uh, they don't have a plan. They don't have a masterpiece. In, in, in the southeastern politics, there is no masterpiece. The South Eastern politicians are serving the Northern and the Western politicians. They are just like servants there. Ndibo have not been able to develop a, blue, a blueprint for themselves, a masterpiece of which this was why Ojuku came up with the Apuga Party in Carbon Kanye. And still on that, uh, this Apuga Party started dominating, dominating the East. There were a lot of governors in the South East that entered into office with Apuga, and immediately Apuga gave them office, they left Apuga, they entered another party. You forgot the small party, the little party that brought you into power. The little party that brought you into power, which, of course, you are now a stakeholder there, you are now a good man. The party brought you into power so that you can have power, so you'll be able to protect them. And what these people do is that when the party brings them into power, 
you see them dumping the party to jump to another party. You forgotten how you got your victory. That this party, this little party you are dumping now, was the party that made you who you are. You were not a governor. And through the umbrella of this party, the flag bearer of this party, you went to uh, you went for governorship. You won. Now yourself did not tell you that what you are there to do is to build your party. To make sure that your party becomes strong because they have made you a strong man there. You are aiming for the higher position, but that will be for the interest of your party. And that is what Ndibo has forgotten. Ndibo left this kind of politics of having a blueprint of what a particular people want, where they are going, their motion, their, their destination. The Southeast politicians have made us to know that um, Ndibo does not have a destination in Nigerian politics. Go, go and see how Asa people play their politics. You will understand that they have a destination. If you see how the Yorubans are playing their politics, you, know, you see that they have a destination. They have where they are going. The Yoruba man has entered now. Other states are being created in the, in the, in the southwest. In the Yoruba land. They are creating their own states there. In the west. New states are being added. How many has, has they added to Ndibo? Ndibo are not looking at some of all these things. What they are looking at is, let's go there, let's pack the money, let's share the money. They don't want to think about their people. Lagos State, the, the people in Lagos State are developing their state every day. Then uh, our governor says uh, they want investors. They want to bring investors into Alibo. How will an investor come into Alibo where they don't, have, don't even have a good uh, road access? No good road access in Alibo. You, you cannot, there is nowhere in Alibo you can see one big lane, a big lane, maybe like four or five lanes. It's only two lanes or one lane. If they build that one lane, they will be making noise that they have done something for Ndibo. Meanwhile, in Lagos State, they are building railways. These people are building trade, making business easy. They see the population that is coming in to do business. And recently, what Ndibo has also diverted to, which is what is happening now, turning their state a den of insecurity because a river does not pass through the forest without bringing down trees. A river does not pass through the forest without bringing down trees. And Nibo has changed their politics to politics of terrorism, politics of terrorists, where you see that in your own land, you will not be able to even harvest again. You will not be able to go to your farmland and farm and come in peace. Nibo have they have a vast land. On this vast land you have, big land, why don't you create roads, enough road inside all those places, inside those forests? Create enough road there, put railway, open the city. Well, because you want investors to come in, expand. But our governors have refused. Go to Anambra state and you see what, no, what is happening there. You go to other states, go to Abia state. It's even the one that Oti came in and is doing. And what even Oti is doing is not enough. Because the government have enough money. The people have refused to invest in industry and a lot of things. And meanwhile, uh, uh, a lot of people are going about. This lawmaker has also gone about uh, to meet Mazen and the Kano because it's either he has one interest or the other. Meanwhile, let's go down to the full detail of the information of what this lawmaker, uh, what transpired between the lawmaker and Mazen and the Kano in the DSS detention and how he visited Ahomadike Ndibo. Let's go down and with you. A lawmaker representing Ikuano Umwaha not Umwaha South Central Constituency, Abia State, Obia Gota has visited the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Nam the Kano. The visit, which took place on Thursday, October 24, 2024, is part of an ongoing effort to find a political solution to the continued detention of the IPOB leader. Kano, who was arrested on June 27, 2021, in the Kenya and subsequently extradited to Nigeria, is facing charges of terrorism, treasonable felony, and inciting violence through his radio Biafra, among others. This is what uh, they wrote about him. This is what they felt, the reason why they, they uh, imprisoned uh, Kano. Let's go on. A statement issued on Saturday by the media team of the lawmaker noted that Agocha was recently approached by Kano's legal team complaining of its inability to interface with the detained IPOB leader. 
The statement read, in part, a few days ago, the lawyer Tomasi Nandikano reached out to his Honorable Minister Obi Agocha representing Ikwano Umwaya North and Umwaya South Federal Constituency. This was about the long-running difficulties being encountered by the legal team in their effort to gain access to meet with their client. Honorable Obi Agocha took urgent steps in writing to the Department of State Security and Tadujin Abbas, Honorable Speaker, of the 10th House of Representatives seeking their immediate intervention. A meeting of the aforementioned was positive to the effect that Honorable Obi Agocha, having inquired from the DSS, who informed that the seeming pursue, the seeming pause to assessing Mazi Namdekano was occasioned by his lawyers asking the judge to rescue him herself, which requires further legal processes and is also known to both parties. <laughs> Obi Agocha had a physical audience with Nam the Kano on Thursday, 24th of October 2024, in the company of an immediate family member, MS Isioma Stella Ikbo, Honorable Obi Agocha fully briefed Mazin and the Kano about the circumstances during their meeting. The statement further noted that the legal team have now been granted access to Kano. A resolution was reached regarding the lack of access to Nam the Kano by his legal team. All right, all right, all right, all right. All those English, all those grammar uh, is that uh, Kano's uh, legal team has been restricted from seeing him in the DSS custody. <laughs> you can imagine the, the country where we find ourselves, uh, your, your legal team, your legal advisor, your lawyer, a man who is standing for you, will be restricted access from seeing you. And um, tell me how you are going to win the case. <laughs> Um, I think um, if every country, in a country that wants to heal, that wants to become better, first of all, the rule of law, the rule of law uh, must rule first. But um, uh, the rule of law must come first. And where there is rule of law, <laughs> that is where, uh, even it's not even about being a Christian. It's not even about being a Muslim. It's about a people coming together to say, I eh, want to make ourselves to work. <laughs> because uh, what happens in this country is that one person will come out and carry like 50 trillion alone, and you have looted other people. You loot the money that uh, other people are supposed to use to survive. And when this money is being looted, another person will come into power and see that money has been looted. He will hunt the other person that looted the money, collect the money from the person, uh, the much he can collect, and that is his settlement. He allows the person to go, and he himself will take that recovery for himself and still loot another one. <laughs> that's the government we find ourselves, uh, that's the government that is running the country, and that is why fuel is a uh, 125 naira and uh, if they are telling us that they will bring it down to 1000 we are clapping for them we are happy <laughs> uh meanwhile uh, uh very soon uh, we are we are heading to 2025 and 2025 budget will be read out to us and we'll see the budget of 2025 we'll see uh all the works they have done with it <laughs> Uh, because they promised us good road. Uh, meanwhile, there is no good. Since uh, they gave birth to me in Nigeria, every day the government comes and tells us, ah, we need good road. That what they, they will tell us what they are bringing to us. Uh, good road. This one. This one. This one. This one. They tell us all these things. And at the end of everything, we see nothing. <laughs> and since that time, the promise of each government that is coming in is giving us good road, electricity, and pipe bomb water. You could imagine in 2023, in this century, uh, that they are still promising Nigeria pipe bomb water. They are still promising Nigerians uh, good road. They are still promising Nigerians electricity. And even the power grade has fallen like three times this year. A power grade, a whole national power grade has fallen three times. And this will, <laughs> this will help you to see the, the, the management, how the management are doing their work. But the power grade has, has fallen four times. Power grade. Meanwhile, 
Uh, this is where we'll be winding down the curtain. And if this is your first time of joining us on this wonderful channel, kindly go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, share, and also remember to on your notification button so that whenever our news drop, you'll be the first to click on. Thank you for listening. God bless you.